Okay, we are doing the further math chapter summaries and we are on core pure year one, chapter three. And I have this note at the top of all of these. It is not possible for these chapter summaries to cover all of the possible ways that you can be assessed on this topic. So please make sure you're using this just for a bit of revision. It is not going to be enough just to kind of look at this. You have to look at exam questions as well. Pretty popular topic with students this one, I think. I'm going to dive in with these things that we have here, okay? When we have a sum of a constant and it's going from 1 to n, we just do the constant multiplied by n. Kind of makes sense, right? That's not in the formula book. Nor is this one that we have here for the sum of the natural numbers. However, the sum of the squares and the sum of cubes is in the formula booklet. And you probably know this shortcut if you've watched my playlist of videos. To go from the sum of the natural numbers to the sum of the cubes, you can just take this one and you can square it. So if you can't remember this one, you can also square root this one to get back to this formula. Of course, if you've watched my videos, you know that you need to factorize as much as possible. Expanding is only there as a last resort. And if we are trying to find something that does not start at 1, we need to be a little bit careful about how we do this. The formula that we typically will be looking for will be starting at 1. So we would go from 1 to n and we would be subtracting from it. It wouldn't be subtracting k on the top. We'd actually have to do 1 less than k because we want to make sure that overall we still have the kth term in there. If you go up to k minus 1, then the one above that would be the kth term and it would be there. So just a quick reminder of this. Again, these uh, types of videos are just as revision. They are not as teaching. So for the first one, we are going to show that for all positive integers n, this thing here is true where a and b are constants to be determined. And then we will apply it to some kind of question like this. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the left-hand side from r equals 1 to n. I'm going to expand the brackets so that I get 3r cubed plus 2r. I'm going to use brackets around this. I'm going to split it into two separate parts. So there's going to be a 3r cubed. I'll put the 3 at the front. And then there's going to be a 2r. So I'm going to do the 2 at the front. And it's from r equals 1 to n like this. Okay. So now that I've got it written in this form, I can just go straight in and I can start saying what the formulae are going to be for this. So for r cubed, it is going to be 3 multiplied by, the formula for r cubed is a quarter, and then it's going to be multiplied by n squared, n plus 1 squared. I'm going to double check that one's right. Of course it is. And then this one is 2 multiplied by a half, n, n plus 1. So we have 3 quarters, n squared, n plus 1 squared. The 2 times the half cancels, and we just have the n and the n plus 1. Now, the key thing that they've got here is there is a quarter and an n. If you want to just take out the n, sorry, there's a quarter, an n, and an n plus 1. If you want to just take out the n and the n plus 1, that's fine. But I'm also going to take out the quarter. When you take out a factor of a quarter, you're dividing by a quarter. You are multiplying by 4. So the things I'm going to be taking out, I'm going to have a quarter, I'm going to have an n, and I'm going to have an n plus 1. I like to do some big brackets for this. And I say, what do I need to multiply this by to get this thing? Well, I've taken the quarter out, so it's going to times it by 4. In other words, there's going to be a 3 here. I've already got one of the n's, so there's going to be one n. And I've already got one of the n plus 1, so there's just going to be another n plus 1. And then for this part, there's the n and the n plus 1, but there's because I've taken a quarter out, I need to actually multiply this thing by 4. We can check it with some expansion afterwards to see that this works. So if I did this times by this, I do get the 3 quarters n squared, n plus 1 squared. And if I do these two things multiplied, the quarter and the 4 cancel, which we want, and we just have the n and the n plus 1. So I know this is going to give me a good answer because I've already got that main thing that I was looking for at the beginning. So I have a quarter n, n plus 1, don't touch that bit. We then have a 3n squared plus 3n plus 4, which means that a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 4. We kind of know we've got it right because we've got those matching parts for a there. And then for part B of the question, we're going to be doing the sum from r equals 6 to 100. Well, I'm going to just say it's f of r. I can't be bothered to write that out each time. To do that, I'm going to go from r equals 1 to 100 of the function minus the sum from r equals 1. What should the top number be? It's got to be up to 5, hasn't it? We want to do 1 less, like we said in this bit. So I've already got the formula is. It's down here. I'm just going to do it with 100 subbed in. And then I'm also going to do it with the 5 subbed in. So when I do it with the 100 subbed in, it is going to be a quarter times by 100 times by 101 
times by 3 times by 100 squared plus 304. And from that I will subtract a quarter times by 5 times by 6 times by 3 times by 5 squared plus 3 times 5, which is 15 plus 4. And then it's just a matter of making sure I don't type anything into the calculator wrong. And that's easier said than done, really. So I'm just getting that first part typed in. And I'm going to be subtracting a quarter times 5 times 6 times by, with my brackets, 3 times 75 plus 15 plus 4. And we have a very big number. We have 7, 6, 5, 1, 6, 8, 9, 5, 76 million, 516,895. And you know what I would probably do is I would get my graphics calculator if I, or even on the normal calculator, I think it can do this. I would literally just type this in with the 6 and the 100, and I would very much expect to see 76,516,895, but that's 7, I'm just going to put it a bit closer like this, okay? So next question is going to be a problem-solving one that's kind of in two parts. We're going to start off by using the standard summation formula, that's the clue in these questions that tells us we're going to be using those R formulae. We're going to find the sum of the first n terms of the following series, and then we're going to find the sum of the first 50 terms. OK, well, it's not kind of written in sort of like R language at all or even like nth term language. So I'm going to ignore the squares for a second. I'm just going to go back to GCSE and I'm going to think about 3, 7, 11, 15, 19. And I'm going to think, what's the nth term of this? Well, you should remember how to do this, right? This is going up in fours, so it would be 4n. And it's one less than the four times table, so it's 4n minus 1. Sometimes people say, what was the previous term? But whatever, it's 4n minus 1. But because they're all being squared, this means that it's going to be 4n minus 1 squared will give us all of these terms that we've got here. So for example, 15 squared is the fourth term. If I do 4 times 4 minus 1 squared, you do get 15 squared. But I probably won't do it with n, will I? Because there's going to be n terms in the series. I'm instead going to say, I'm going to use the r notation. So this is going to be my 4r minus 1 squared. I'm starting at the first term which is this one, and I'm going to go all the way up to n. So I need to do a bit of expanding some brackets. 4r minus 1 squared is going to be 16r squared. You get a minus 4r and a minus 4r, and you get a plus 1 like this. So that's from r equals 1 to n. Same thing as before. I'll take the 16 to the front. It's going to be with my r squared. It gets very boring writing those things every time. I'll do the 8. And there's also going to be a 1, which is just the sum from r equals 1 to n. So being very careful with this, this is going to be 16 multiplied by r squared is a sixth n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1. That's literally just using the r squared formula that is over here, okay? I'm going to do minus 8 lots of the r formula, which is a half n, n plus 1. And this last one, the sum from r equals 1 to n of 1, well, it's like the k1, isn't it? So it's just going to be kn, or it's just going to be n. So let's do some tidying up. 16 over 6, I think that's going to simplify to 8 over 3. So it's 8 over 3n, n plus 1, 2n plus 1. And then we have 8 over 2, that's going to be 4n, n plus 1, plus n. Now, the only thing that all of them have in common, because there is 1, 2, 3 things of that one at the end it's just n is going to be the highest common factor that we can take out of this so i'm going to take out the n i'm probably going to take out a third as well actually because i don't really like this fraction hanging around here so i'm going to take out a third n if you didn't do the third n you just did an n you'll still end up with the same thing as me as well so if i take out a third n for the first part that would leave me with an eight an n plus one and a two n plus one now, when you take out a third, I said that's like multiplying by 3 when you put this part in. So instead of it being a 4, it's going to have to be a 12. So it's going to be a minus 12. The n has gone to the front, so it's just going to be the n plus 1. And there's going to be, you'd think it'd be a plus 1, but because I took out that third, it's going to be a plus 3. And I want you to double check that these all work. We do have the third and the 8 to get the 8 thirds, the, eight thirds, the n, the n plus 1, and the 2n plus 1. Great. A third times the minus 12 is the minus 4, and we have the n and the n plus 1, and a third n times 3 is just n. Now I said we can go to the bit, it's the last resort of just doing the expanding. We are going to have to expand this. So that's a third n. I will do 8 lots of. 
the 2n plus 1 and the n plus 1 will give me a 2n squared plus 2n plus n, so it's plus 3n plus 1. We then get a minus 12n minus 12 plus 3. So it's not too crazy looking in here. You could have left the third inside if you wanted to as well. And we get 16n squared plus 24n plus 8 minus 12n minus 12 plus 3. And so we then have a third n, 16n squared. 24 minus 12 is just 12n. And then we have 8 plus 3 minus 12 which is minus one like this, okay? And then it says, find the sum of the first 50 terms. So I'm gonna say the sum of the first 50 terms will just be the sum from r equals one to 50 of four r minus one squared. It literally is just gonna be saying, let's substitute 50 into this. So that's a third times by 50, 16 times by 50 squared plus 12 times by 50 minus one. So that is 50 times a third multiplied by 16 times 50 squared plus 12 times 50 minus one. And we get six, seven, six, six, five, oh, 676,650. And again, I would type that into my calculator and just double check that I've done the substitution correctly so that I know I have done this correctly. So this is problem solving part one. Problem solving part two that we've got here, it does say using the result from the previous question. Uh, you wouldn't typically see something written in this kind of way, but um, I just thought it'd be fun to do something that's saving a bit of time rather than doing the same things again and again. Using the result from the previous question, find any values of n for which this thing is equal to this thing. Now, something to note here is summations are only valid for positive values of n, and they must make sense with all of the sigma notation given. So I don't know if you've noticed this, but here r is equal to 2. So that was one of the sneaky things I did in this question. That means it wouldn't make sense if n was less than 2. I, maybe it's not good with that small number. If, if r was, say, 12, it wouldn't make sense to have the number on top as like 7 or 8. It has to be something that is bigger, 12 or bigger for that. So one of the sneaky things is the r equals 2, and we are going to be using this formula. So for the left-hand side, we will be doing the sum from r equals 1 to n of 4r minus 1 squared minus, well, because we want it to go to 2, we just actually want to get rid of the first one, right? We just want to get rid of the first term that is there. It's the saying start at the second one. So start at the 7 squared. Well, I could use the formula, or I could just say, let's just get rid of 3 squared. So let's subtract 3 squared. That's the left-hand side. And the right-hand side is 5n cubed, plus 5n squared, plus 9n minus 9. And now I have the formula for this part now, because this is exactly the thing that we calculated over here. So that is a third n, 16n squared, plus 12n minus 1, minus 9, equals 5n cubed, plus 5n squared, plus 9n minus 9. It's just the case of solving an equation here. Now I can add 9 to both sides and get rid of that. And also I can divide everything through by n. Now if you divide through by n, that means that n could be equal to 0. That's not really a useful solution for this. It doesn't make sense that n is going to be 0. How can you start at 2 and finish at 0? So even though we are going to cancel by n, we are going to just end up with this. It's not going to be an extra solution. So I've cancelled out the n on the left-hand side. I'm going to cancel out all of the ends over here like this. And I'm going to get rid of that third by tripling both sides. Oops, didn't have that n in there. It's going to give me a 15n squared, a 15n, and a 27. So it's just a quadratic, right? I'll do 16n squared minus 15n squared. That is just n squared. 12 minus 15 is minus 3n. And minus 1 minus 27 is minus 28. Now you can either put this on the calculator. I think this looks pretty straightforward to factorize for this question. I think it's going to be an n minus 7 and an n plus 4. Yeah, minus 7 plus 4 is minus 3. Minus 7 times 4 is minus 28, which means that n is either equal to 7 
or n is equal to minus 4. Well, we talked about this earlier, didn't we? It's only val valid for positive values of n. It doesn't make sense in the context for it to be a negative value. So I'm going to reject this one and just say that n is equal to 7 is the only solution that we have for this question. Okay, it's the only value of n that will make this true. And if you wanted to, you could substitute it in on your calculator. You could put that on the left-hand side. You could sub in 7 to this, and it should come up with the same expression that we've got here. Okay, so series is a pretty short topic, um, but I'll be hoping to see you in another video for some of my chapter summaries soon. And I do run something called the Bison Maths Award every year. If you are interested in winning a scholarship from me with £150 and potentially um, a graphics calculator as well, just go on YouTube and search for Bison Maths Award and you might see if it is currently open, something you can apply to. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you sometime soon. Thank you.